Hey, it's Vaughn. What's up? Let's talk about Starfield. So we have this interview, uh, or kind of this summary of an interview on IGN. Uh, this article is by Joe Screbbles, and uh, basically it's uh, a summarization of uh, an interview with Todd Howard, uh, you know, head of you know, Bethesda and lead on the Starfield game um, that gives us a little bit of detail uh, that we didn't get before. Um, that we didn't get from the trailer um, or even from the extended you know, Xbox showcase today. So um, I'm going to kind of I'm going to read through these really quickly. There is a video. If you want to find this article, you can watch a video where Todd Howard does speak to um, uh, Ryan, I believe, from IGN. And uh, you can see some of this yourself. But here we go. Uh, so the first one here, Todd Howard confirms Fallout 5 is coming after Elder Scrolls 6. Todd Howard has confirmed to IGN that Fallout 5 will be Bethesda Game Studios' next game after The Elder Scrolls 6, which itself will follow uh, on from the 2023 Starfield. Uh, quote, yes, Elder Scrolls 6 is in pre-production, he said. And you know, we are going to be doing Fallout 5 after that, so our slate's pretty full going forward for a while. We have some other projects that we look at from time to time as well. So this shouldn't be surprising, um, you know, Starfield, part of why it's such a big deal um, is this is one of, this is their first like major new IP in a really long time. Uh, and uh, besides Elder Scrolls is, is their only second original IP. Um, you have to keep in mind that Fallout 1 and 2 uh, were not made by Bethesda, uh, had nothing to do with them. So, um, that's part of why Starfield is such a big deal. And this shouldn't be surprising. Before it was Elder Scrolls uh, Fallout back and forth. Um, obviously, we had New Vegas, um, you know, made by Obsidian, I believe, um, back in the day. Uh, basically, it's a, a giant mod of Fallout 3, essentially. And then we had Fallout 76, but that was a kind of a joint venture um, with another part of Zenimax. So them doing Fallout 5 after Elder Scrolls 6 isn't that surprising. The problem is, is that Elder Scrolls 6 is in pre-production and uh, there's a solid chance that Elder Scrolls 6 won't release. Gosh, if they start full production, even if they start it next year in 2023, I mean, it could be 2027 or 2028 before that comes out. Uh, probably the end of this generation that just started a couple years ago console wise uh, which means that if they started production of fallout 5 then i mean you're legitimately looking at the early to mid 2030s for this next fallout um, there's always the chance that with all of this microsoft money maybe uh, Bethesda, you know, hires up and has like two full teams and can eventually handle like two AAA sized games, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. And so, uh, while a Fallout 5 uh, <laughs> confirmation is cool, it means, I mean, it, it, it will be at least 10 years until that would be here. And that's calling it very early. I would say. 11 or 12 if not more uh, the next one here starfield includes more handcrafted content than any bethesda game alongside its procedural galaxy amid a huge amount of new information on starfield from the xbox bethesda showcase likely the most discussed detail was todd howard's announcement that the upcoming sci-fi rpg will include 1000 fully explorable howard told us more about the game's approach to procedural generation what it offers and assured us that players can ignore them in favor of a huge amount of fully handcrafted content if they want to this shouldn't be surprising it's interesting like I think that there's people out there who thought that when he said that there were over a thousand planets, that was going to be a thousand like handcrafted, deep, you know, interesting, full of content places to go. To believe that you either need to be like completely ignorant of how games are made and what's possible right now, or you're just intentionally being, you know, silly. And and, and 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 then when the game comes out, you can be like, oh my gosh, this game's so empty. There's more to this point and another question here, but this shouldn't be surprising. Um, the 
the emptier planets i wouldn't be surprised if they have like you know some like animal species on them maybe some of them are going to have some like little side stories and stuff that you can discover but the simple fact is is that you know with today's technology it would take 30 years to make a game that has a thousand fully explorable fully handcrafted planets and you know that's it's not it's not what this game is so chill out uh, Starfield's main quest is about 20% bigger than previous Bethesda games, around 30 to 40 hours long. Starfield's main quest is about 20% bigger than previous Bethesda games such as Skyrim and Fallout 4, with Todd Howard saying that means it should take around 30 to 40 hours to complete without stepping away to do side content. Howard said the game's main story is longer than normal due to the sheer number of quests. The ones ending up a little bit longer than our previous games and we may tune that some still it's more quests so it might be 20 percent more than our previous ones not super surprising especially because you're gonna have like in previous games like fallout 4 and skyrim you're talking about an entire game that takes place in one large map right so this game the, the, it's it's gonna take place on multiple planets it's going to take place on space stations and spaceships. You know, there's going to be all kinds. Of, so there's going to be travel involved and there's probably going to be quests and story missions that start in one planet and end on another. Those things, along with just probably more content, uh, is, are, is going to make this next game longer. It's not that surprising. Uh, yes, Starfield will begin with a classic Bethesda step out moment. Bethesda's open world RPGs may vary wildly in setting and tone, but they are oft, uh, but they very often share one thing: what Bethesda calls the quote step out moment. Unquote. The scene in which your character steps into the world properly and sees its sheer scale. Starfield won't be bucking that trend howard has uh, was asked if starfield had a step out moment and it and how it would create a grand reveal of its world considering it includes 1000 different planets uh, and howard responded quote there is look the way the game starts is pretty set for everybody so we definitely have what we call the step out moment we probably have a few of them given the scale of the game unquote uh, so yeah i mean that's cool that's just a you know that's a that's a staple of um of bethesda games and it doesn't surprise me at all that, that we're gonna get that it's always super cool and i can't wait to see it <laughs> starfield doesn't let you fly seamlessly from space to planet that's really just not important quote Todd Howard has said that Starfield won't allow you to fly seamlessly from space to its 1,000 explorable planets. Uh, side note, man, this IG and this uh, old Joe Scrubbles here really, really loves uh, repeating and linking this 1,000 explorable planets. It almost feels passive aggressive. Back to the article. Saying that the feature is really just not that important to the player to justify the engineering work involved. People have asked, can you fly the ship straight down to the planet? No. We decided early in the project that the on surface is one reality, and when you're in space, it's another reality. This is totally fair. Um, the only game I've ever played where you can do this, what, what they're talking about, is No Man's Sky. And it always takes me completely out of it. It feels so awkward and weird. Um, I've seen people say that like Star Citizen and some other games do it, and that like in Star Citizen, it's this really cinematic, great moment. Well, I think Star Citizen's a big giant scam and I'm never gonna give them a penny, so I don't care about that. And if other games have done it well, that's fine. But from a technical point of view, the I suspect they can make both the space experience and the planet experience better individually without having this seamless transition than with it. And that's fine. Um, I feel like this adds so little if they were to have put it in, it would probably take away a lot more than it adds. Um, it's annoying because this is perfect bait for people who are looking for reasons to moan and groan about this game. But who cares? They aren't going to play it anyways, or they will and they're going to love it and they won't ever admit it. But I, I don't think this is that big of a deal because, in fact, the one game I do play uh, that has this, um, I, I don't like it. 
Um, and I did miss one here. Okay, this is actually a really important one. Starfield has four main cities and New Atlantis is the biggest city Bethesda's ever made. Um, so it says Starfield will have four major cities for plan, uh, players to explore, including New Atlantis, which is the biggest that developer Bethesda has ever made. Howard said that New Atlantis, a capital city of the United Colonies, is not just the biggest in this game, but bigger than anything in Skyrim, Fallout 4, or, or, uh, Fallout 4, or any of the developer's previous games. Quote, it has all of the services you would expect and you can work on your ship there and the faction touch that, Howard said. But that's also the headquarters for Constellation, which is the faction that you join that is the last group of space explorers. Kind of like, uh, kind of this NASA meets Indiana Jones meets the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen group, unquote. And so this is why I've been, this kind of goes back to the thousand different planets thing. Sure, there's a thousand plus different planets. Cool. I, I believe they said there's a hundred ish star systems. My guess is that each star system is going to have like one planet that's like explorable, has side missions, maybe is populated a little bit. And then there's probably going to be maybe 15 or 20 planets that have like moderate or small amounts of settlement of missions of things to do and then there's going to be like four or five planets that are like significant they are, are going to have a lot of content on them a lot of settlement you know these four main cities um you know and and then and in periphery i'm sure there's going to be little settlements you can find and and stuff like that um, you can make your own for example but this goes back to whether ignorantly or with uh you know bad intent people who thought that there were going to be like a thousand planets with a thousand civilizations on them it's not going to happen we're never going to see that <laughs> that's that's not coming at least not in my lifetime probably um so this kind of clears that up okay and then the final one here um starfield space combat is unique and inspired by ftl and mech warrior todd howard said starfield features a unique take on space combat and that was partly inspired by ftl and mech warrior and yes you can steal ships that you board howard said there's a uh, quote there's been a lot of space sims that we're fans of and the space shooters from the 90s but the team wanted starfield to feel like something unique uh unquote he went on to explain how both indie darling ftl and classic shooter mech warrior were unlikely touchstones for the game yeah so um I, i'm i'm good um that's fine no like serious shade thrown but then here reiterating the thousand planets thing like if you want to be snarky in your writing that's cool i guess but it comes off as like really lame in my opinion but anyways um and, and that's cool ftl I, I haven't played ftl i played mech warrior way back in the day but even from the footage they showed it made it kind of look like the combat isn't gonna be um even like uh no man's sky and, and some other games it looks like it's gonna be like heavy and weighty and and that's kind of cool i like that um i don't really love that you know so many space uh, even star wars and stuff like it feels like very like super duper like reactive and, and and very agile and stuff i love the idea of like some space combat being like almost like submarine ship com uh, combat from world war one or two where it's these like big kind of lumbering machines who like you know, have to like line up their shots and they're like sending you know these like pulse you know or missiles across the uh, space uh i don't know maybe that's not what this is going to be necessarily but the um being able to steal ships that you can board we saw a really quick clip of that in the reveal where um our ship or the character ship was docked to another ship like the same size so obviously i'm sure we're going to be able to dock up to big giant space stations and stuff but uh, and even like big freighters and stuff potentially but this was just one ship to another small ship and so i imagine if we disable ships we'll be able to dock on them and go inside and clear them out and then you know 
take over their ship or sell it or whatever. So I think that sounds super cool. I think this is a solid article, even with some of the shade, I think that's being thrown in it. Um, it, it I would definitely check out the video. I would maybe not give this article a click because now after I've read, uh, I, I read through it once or twice before this, but I only really picked up on the snark now. Um, so check out the video. Um, it's definitely worth uh, looking at. And, uh, and that's what I have for this one. You can check me out on Twitter and everywhere else as Bond Diesel. Um, this video, please like it. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell to get reminders of new videos and check out my other stuff, including my Mass Effect coverage, the Division coverage, and my podcast, The Echo Cast. I'm giving away a Mass Effect helmet. A uh, link is on my Twitter. Go find that. And um, I think that's all I have this time. So until next time. <laughs>